Well, we are continuing our coverage of the death of Sonia Massey. She was shot and killed earlier this month during an encounter with Sangamon County deputies. They responded to her house after reports of a possible prowler. Sonia's death has gained national attention after Illinois State Police released the body camera footage. Former Deputy Sean Grayson has since been fired from the department and is charged with murder in her death. County officials say they were not confused about if the gunshot that killed Sonia Massey was self-inflicted. This comes after confusion on the 911 dispatch about whether the gunshot was self-inflicted. News Channel 20's Julia Rosier joins us now with more. Julia. Dawn, Stacy, that's right. Sangamon County says these new details come from their new website with information about Sonia Massey and in the investigation into that deputy involved shooting. County officials say that they were aware that the phrase self inflicted was used by radio dispatchers on 911. But this, but this, what? Officials also say former deputy Sean Grayson stated at least twice in the body camera video that he was the shooter. They were saying it was self-inflicted initially or it was some intruder who did it, but they never said it was law enforcement who did it. Sonia Massey's family said last week that calling it a self-inflicted incident was an attempt to cover up the shooting. County officials responded saying, quote, we understood it to be a question by dispatchers initially and that, quote, no cover up has occurred. The sheriff's office is also calling on the Illinois State Police to investigate the claims on the scanner audio, suggesting that the cause of death was self-inflicted. Reporting live in Springfield, I'm Julia Rosier. Back to you. Thanks, Julia. The sheriff's office contacted Illinois State Police to take over the investigation at 1.42 a.m. on July 6th. And we are taking a live look now at Chicago. Attorney Ben Crump, who represents the Massey family, is about to hold a press conference. Crump and community leaders, they are right now, as you see, discussing updates on the investigation. Later tonight, a rally will be held in the city in honor of Sonia Massey. We'll be bringing you updates on these developments throughout the evening on air and online at newschannel20.com. One of the topics of discussion at the press conference was expected to be a grievance filed by the Illinois Fraternal Order of Police Labor Council. That council filed the grievance against Sangamon County Sheriff's Department on behalf of former Deputy Sean Grayson. However, the council has now announced it won't pursue the grievance, saying, quote, we have arrived at the final stage of the process where a determination can be made regarding whether or not to proceed with Sean Grayson's grievance. The union has determined that it will not be proceeding any further. Continuing our team coverage now, the community voicing their concerns over the death of Sonia Massey. The U.S. Department of Justice held a community healing and listening session to ask the community feedback on how to improve police communication with the county. News Channel 20's Carolina Hassett joins us in studio with more on what officials had to say about as they face the public for the first time. Carolina. That's right. Several Sangamon County officials facing the public for the first time since Massey's death. This included Sheriff Jack Campbell, who apologized and said that they failed to they failed her and to do their jobs. Organizers asked the community how they feel about the recent events that have occurred in Sangamon County and how they recommend improving police communications throughout the county. Many officials spoke at the event, including state's attorney John Milheiser, who says his main priority is to keep people safe. We do that by prosecuting cases in Sangamon County without fear or favor and holding accountable those who break the law. That is the impartial administration of justice, no matter who they are. Melheiser said there needs to be more partnerships between the community and law enforcement in order to help keep people safe. Many residents spoke about being scared of law enforcement and are now fearful to call the police. Ward 2 Alderman Sean Gregory also spoke at the event, saying that it can't just be a conversation. There has to be action. In studio, I'm Carolina Hassett. Back to you. Thanks, Carolina. We will have more for you tonight on News Channel 20 at 10 on what residents recommend when it comes to strengthening police communications in the county. We are learning more about Sean Grayson, the former deputy who shot 
Sonia Massey earlier this month killing her. We've been in touch with law enforcement questioning their hiring practices that led to Grayson getting the job. Since the death of Sonia Massey, Grayson was fired from the sheriff's department and charged with first degree murder and now is awaiting his next court date. He has pleaded not guilty. Well, the shortage of police officers continues to be a problem nationwide. Yeah, and some are concerned the recent shooting of Sonia Massey will make it harder to recruit new officers. News Channel 20's Julia Rose here has more. That's right. I talked with two statewide agencies who are dedicated to the well being of officers across the state. Now, they both tell me that departments are still struggling to recruit and retain police officers, sometimes even leading to some desperation hires. I think certainly, you know, when we have instances like we've just had, does not make it any easier. Um, that, that certainly brings people a question, okay, well, do I really want to get into this profession? The nation continues to experience a shortage of police officers. It's scary. Um, it's not always safe. Um, those are challenges that everybody's got to try to uh, deal with in their own minds as to whether or not that's an experience that they want to go through. Uh, in terms of being in law enforcement. Both the Sheriff's Association and Illinois Association of Chiefs of Police say recruiting and maintaining officers isn't easy. Police departments have had to try new ways to recruit candidates like using social media or developing relationships with candidates to show them what it's like to work at the department. It's still tough getting out there trying to find qualified candidates. You just have to dig a little deeper, search a little harder, and change up the ways you do things. Some say although police recruitment is improving, agencies are still struggling to find qualified officers. It's not a Monday through Friday job. You can't work remote. It's a challenging job where, you know, a bad decision can, you know, ruin your life, ruin your career, you know. But to go along with that, it's also a very rewarding career. Both agencies say police departments always try to look for the best candidates possible. Does a shortage of officers kind of lead to more desperation hiring? I think it, it certainly, if you've got less of a pool of people to pull from, you've got less of a people, less people to pull from. They still have to maintain certain minimum qualifications. You probably run the risk, potentially, of more people going into this profession that might have at one point in time not made it into this profession. At the Sangamon County Sheriff's Office, there is one vacant deputy position that's been open since the end of this past June. Sheriff Jack Campbell says although they are actively recruiting always, they do have a smaller pool of applicants to choose from. Reporting live in Springfield, I'm Julia Rosier. Back to you. Thanks, Julia. Sheriff Campbell also says when a deputy leaves or retires, it can take up to eight months before the position is filled and the deputy is out working on their own. Continuing our team coverage, more information about Sean Grayson's disciplinary record and issues in law enforcement are coming to light. Today, we received an audio recording of a conversation between Sean Grayson and a Logan County Chief Deputy. News Channel 20's Carson Gordy joins us after scanning through documents and audio recordings. Carson. The conversation happened after Sean Grayson was involved in a high speed chase that ended with him hitting a deer. It happened in November of 2022. Grayson had been a Logan County Sheriff Deputy for seven months. During the conversation, Logan County Chief Deputy Nate Miller questioned Grayson about inaccuracies in his police report and said he thinks he knows why his previous employer, the Auburn Police Department, did not prosecute multiple of his cases arresting people. Sean, I'm going to have a hard, straight-up conversation with you right now. I have a strong feeling I know why they were dropped. They dropped your cases because of what I'm looking at right here. If we can't trust what you say and what you see, we can't have you in our uniform. He was employed for five months after this incident. Sangamon County hired Grayson right after he left Logan County. They said they were not provided these documents. I'm Carson Gordy. Back to you. All right, thank you. Carson Grayson worked at four other law enforcement agencies before being hired in Logan County. Meanwhile, a grievance was issued against the Sangamon County Sheriff's Department by the Fraternal Order of Police's Labor Council on behalf of Sean Grayson. After an internal evaluation, the council says they are no longer pursuing the grievance. County officials say they were not confused about if the gunshot that killed Sonia Massey was self-inflicted. These details come from Sangamon County's website, 
with information on the death of Sonia Massey. County officials say they are aware the phrase self-inflicted was used by radio dispatchers. Officials also say former deputy Sean Grayson stated at least twice in the body camera footage that he was the shooter. They were saying it was self-inflicted initially or it was some intruder who did it, but they never said it was law enforcement who did it. County officials responded saying, quote, we understood it to be a question by dispatchers initially and quote, no cover up has occurred. And we are taking a live look now at the rally in Chicago in honor of Sonia Massey. Earlier today, Ben Crump, the attorney representing the Massey family, held a news conference talking about updates to the investigation. We will bring you that update as soon as they become available. We are continuing to work for you and dig deeper into the death of Sonia Massey. More information about former deputy Sean Grayson's disciplinary records and issues in law enforcement are coming to light. Yeah, Grayson is facing multiple charges, including first degree murder in connection to Sonia's death. He has pled not guilty to all of his charges and is set to return to court in August. And as we just mentioned, uh, Grayson Moore is coming out about his record and the issues in law enforcement. That's right. Today we obtained an audio recording of a conversation between Sean Grayson and a Logan County Chief Deputy. News Channel 20's Carson Gordy joins us with what they reveal. Carson. The conversation happened after Sean Grayson was involved in a high speed chase that ended with him hitting a deer, damaging a squad car. Seven months on. How are you still employed by us? I don't know. Sean, do you understand what I am saying? Yes, I do, sir. In November of 2022, then Logan County Deputy Sean Grayson had a meeting with the Chief Deputy, Nate Miller. It was over an incident that started with Grayson wanting to pull over a female who looked, in quote, suspicious. 100, she just took off on me. I just needed to wait for them to start the vehicle. You were going to stop them for just their behavior in a vehicle? No, I mean, I... I was going to wait for a traffic violation, but in my mind, that was the whole reason I was going to see what they were doing. It was just the reaction of the female in the truck. This led to a high-speed pursuit that Grayson was ordered to terminate. He ignored that order, going as fast as 110 miles per hour before striking a deer. Well, I'll definitely be terminated because a buck just smacked the side of my driver's side door. After that event, Grayson was ordered to write a report that Logan County said had multiple inaccuracies. Grayson says he did not review the body cam footage before writing it. You got a report writing violation for policy. You got an accuracy violation for policy. You got a standard of conduct violation for policy, and we're 48 seconds into this. The chief deputy says that Grayson, while working at his previous job, the Auburn Police Department arrested some people who were not prosecuted by the state's attorney. Sean, I'm going to have a hard, straight up conversation with you right now. I have a strong feeling I know why they were dropped. They dropped your cases because of what I'm looking at right here. We can't trust what you say and what you see. We can't have you in our uniform. Grayson was warned that it's vital to be accurate. But a lot of officers have been charged and end up in jail because that's what they perceived. Official misconduct will land you in jail. In the final report, Logan County did state that Grayson appeared to be honest during the interview and acknowledged his inability to recall from memory alone. Sigma County hired Grayson after his tenure at Logan County. They said they were not provided these documents and were not aware of them. Both Sigma County and Logan, Com and Logan County did not comment on why they weren't exchanged when I reached out to them today. I'm Carson Gordy. Back to you. Thank you, Carson. We will have the full audio recording of this meeting on our website, newschannel20.com. That was a rally in Chicago in honor of Sonia Massey from this evening. Sonia's family members, attorney Ben Crump, as well as Reverend Al Sharpton, we're all in attendance chanting Sonia's last words. I rebuke you in the name of Jesus. This they say they want Sonia's death to be a catalyst for police reform.
That was attorney Ben Crump speaking to the public in the Chicago rally today. Civil rights activist, as we mentioned, Al Sharpton also speaking there and continued to push for the George Floyd Justice and Policing Act. After the death of Sonia Massey, U.S. Senator Tammy Duckworth has introduced a bill that would incentivize state's attorney's offices to allow other agencies to prosecute cases of police-involved use of deadly force. She says it would help eliminate conflict of interest. The senator said in a statement in part, quote, Factors such as close relationships between local prosecutors and police departments can hinder independent investigations and impact the pursuit of charges and more convictions. We reached out to Sangamon County to ask whether state's attorney John Milheiser would have a conflict of interest prosecuting Sean Grayson and whether they support another county handling this case. We have not heard back at this time. The community is voicing their concerns over the death of Sonia Massey. The U.S. Department of Justice held a community healing and listening session to ask the community feedback on how to improve police communication with the county. News Channel 20's Carolina Hassett has more on what residents are saying. Many residents saying they are scared of law enforcement and are now afraid to call the police, with many pleading for things to change. I live alone. And even though I already preferred not to call the police, I'm definitely not calling you now. Several residents voicing their concerns over the death of Sonia Massey, with many saying they live in fear. I'm nervous to be here. I am anxious to stand in this room because people are afraid and we're mad. And this should not be. The U.S. Department of Justice asked the community how they feel about the recent events in Sangamon County and how they recommend improving police communications. Their recommendations included rebuilding trust by reviewing hiring and background check processes. Something needs to change, and that change starts at the hiring process, which is done by you. Other recommendations including mental health evaluations as well as drug testing for officers. But most importantly, the overall message was to vote for new law enforcement officials. Now, residents also ask that law enforcement be held to the same standard as other jobs, such as first responders, when it comes to the hiring process. In studio, I'm Carolina Hassett.